It had been a whole year, 365 days since he last heard from her. His search had led to so many dead ends that he couldn't keep track anymore. Police departments, private eyes, and various friends had all helped in his search for her, yet nobody found anything that could help. That's why he'd been searching for her alone. He started back at her apartment where she had last been seen. Nothing was out of place. Nothing had been taken. It didn't look like there had been a struggle. It didn't look like she had been taken from here. So what happened to her? None of her co-workers had seen any weird behavior from her. She hadn't mentioned that anything was unusual in her life. They all said she was happy and looking forward to his visit. So why did she disappear? He had traced her last steps up to her local library. He had talked to the head librarian there who said she hadn't checked out anything in weeks. How she couldn't find anything to read and went home empty handed every week. As a matter of fact, she hadn't checked out anything at all the day she disappeared. The security cameras at the front desk showed as much. They showed how she stood at the front desk for a few minutes before leaving. She even looked at a book on the desk before heading out the door with nothing in her hands. Nothing made sense at all. She had no reasons to take off like this. She had a good job, good friends, and a good hobby. Nothing made sense at all. Leaving the library to go back to his hotel, he passed a little bookstore. The man behind the counter just so happened to turn his direction as he was passing by. The figure behind the counter just smiled at him with the most uneasy smile he had ever seen. He was so uneasy that a cold chill ran up his spine, making the hairs on the back of his neck stand on end. He shook it off and continued walking. When had he stopped? Just to stare back at the figure in the bookstore? He had to admit that was the weirdest thing he had ever experienced. No one had ever spooked him this much, and to think they were separated by glass. He'd hate to think what would happen if they had met face to face. Making his way to his room, he couldn't believe how tired he was. All the stress from the entire situation, and all the days of searching, finally began to weigh on him. So, he decided to lay down for a well-deserved nap before going out for something to eat. However, his sleep was uneasy with his nightmares returning again. Him hearing her screaming for her life as something pulled her away from his hands. The sick smile on the monster's face as its forked tongue stuck out. She's mine. It shrieked before disappearing into the darkness with her. She tried to hold on to him as she was pulled away, only to leave red scratches on his right arm. The burn of the scratches was enough to jar him awake from this horrible nightmare. Trying to catch his breath, he looked at his arm to see the same scratches from his dream. He went to his bathroom to wash his face before heading out for something to eat. Maybe that would help him clear his head. Walking into the cafe, he failed to notice the same figure from the bookstore sitting in a dark corner staring at him. A wide sick smile spread upon the figure's face as it watched with fascination the young man sit down and order a meal. She's mine, it hissed as it stared at the young man eager to meet him face to face in the coming days. A few days later, he was going through video he had requested from the library. It was a CCTV footage from both the front desk and the front doors. He had gone through numerous videos from that day, all from the different stores and buildings near and around the library, none of which held any clues as to what happened to her. This was the last video he had. Hopefully it held any clues he had missed from his search. On this night, his nightmares kept him awake. So what better way to get his mind off of them than looking at more video? Maybe his now overactive brain could find something that could lead him in the right direction. This angle of the camera showed the video from the front desk, a better view than the one he'd seen before. A view of anyone who might have talked to or seen her before she left the library for the last time. As he watched, he saw more of the same, her moving from one side of the library to the other looking for something new to read. She passed in front of the desk numerous times before giving up and heading for home. Soon she stopped at the front desk looking at something. Since no one was at the desk at the time, he thought she was just looking at the thick book that was always on the desk. He watched intently as he saw her play with the book for a few minutes. She flipped through the pages as if she was debating whether or not to ask if she could take it home. None of that was unusual. What was unusual was how she shook her head as if she was talking to someone, yet no one was there. She even pointed towards either side of the library before turning her attention back to the book on the desk. He tried to mentally write it off as her talking to someone in the office. It was behind the desk. Someone was always in there, watching who came in and out of the library. 
although they would have come out by now and no one had. It wasn't until she took the book on the desk and left that he realized something was wrong. The head librarian quickly came out of the office upon seeing the girl leave with the book. The head librarian ran out the door to try and get the book back, yet came back in within a few minutes empty-handed. It was as if the girl had vanished before the head librarian could catch up to her. If that wasn't odd enough, the next part was even odder. This angle from the outside front door showed the girl pulling and knocking on the door as if it was locked. The timestamp on the video showed around 1 p.m. The library would not have been closed at that time. After trying to get in the library, the girl sat down on the steps before grabbing her phone, putting it to her ear, and then quickly throwing it to the ground before running away. Not three seconds later, a stranger in a long trench coat and large-brimmed hat stopped near the phone, bent over to pick it up, toyed with it for a bit, then put it in his pocket before heading the same direction as the girl. Then the video goes to static as if someone erased what came next. Closing his laptop, he rubbed his eyes before taking a drink of his nearby water. What was going on here? None of the other videos had shown any of this, not a single one, and this video clearly shows she was being followed, but it didn't show what happened next. He spent the next few hours searching all the other videos, looking for the 1pm timestamp. Not one of them showed a figure in a trench coat or her pulling on the doors of the library. Only one did, the one from the front doors of the library itself. Convinced there was more to this video, he planned to go to the library when the doors opened and demand to see the rest of that video. He knew the head librarian would know more about this footage and be able to give him the answers he needed. This was the first clue he'd had in a year, yet it would have to wait till morning. It was only 1 a.m. and he needed to get some rest. Hopefully soon he would have all the answers he needed. Later that morning, he walked into the library and asked to speak to the head librarian. He needed to know more about the footage that was sent to him the day prior. Like, why didn't they notice her return at 1 p.m.? And what happened to the rest of the footage? Yet when he described what he had seen, the response he got was not what he was expecting. It gave him more questions than answers. The head librarian said that what he was describing wasn't the same footage that was sent to him. In fact, the head librarian pulled out a copy of the video from that day and played it for him. This version showed the girl leaving and not stopping at the front desk. It also showed that she wasn't back at the library at 1pm like his footage showed. She hadn't come back at all. He pulled out his laptop to show the head librarian the video he had, only to be met with the same footage he had just seen. He watched in shock as what he had on his laptop was frame by frame the exact same thing the head librarian had just showed him. He couldn't believe what he was seeing, or not seeing. He feverishly went through all the footage on his laptop trying to find the footage from the night before. He even renamed the file to make sure he could find it later. The file he found with the name he used was what he had just played. Confused, he closed his laptop and got up to leave, thanking the head librarian for the help he'd received so far. His plan now is to go back to his hotel room so he could go through his laptop completely to find what footage he'd seen the night prior. But before he could reach the front doors, his phone rang. Looking for someone? Asking who this was only got him no answer. He looked at his phone screen to check the caller ID to see who was calling him. It was her phone number. Shocked and scared, he asked again who it was. This was clearly a male voice. Was this the person who had her? Did this person have her phone too? That would be the only logical explanation how this person was able to use her phone to call him. Meet me outside, was the last thing he heard before the line went dead. He quickly gathered his things and his thoughts before heading outside. Maybe this was the clue he had been waiting for since she'd vanished. Maybe this person knew something and had finally decided to come forward with this information. Either way, he needed to talk to this person. He needed answers and needed them now. Yet, when he stepped outside, he was met with the strangest sight. The crowds of people that were once moving about the streets were gone. It was as if they had all vanished. The streets themselves were empty and eerily quiet. No cars, honking horns, people's voices, or birds could be heard. He looked around in wonder as to how this could happen. Had he fallen asleep somehow that he never noticed? He was tired from not sleeping much the night before. Or maybe he was dreaming and still hadn't woken up yet. His dreams had been getting a bit weirder over the past few months. Either way, he decided to start walking, only planning on walking a few feet. He wanted to see where he was and if he could somehow have accidentally used the back door of the library. He looked all around him, hoping to see anyone else before bumping into something hard. Looking up to see what it was, he was shocked to see the figure in the trench coat from the footage. 
The smile on the figure's face and the chill down the spine because of its shark-like teeth. The eyes that shone like lights through slits made him back up a few steps before taking off towards the library doors. Yet when he pulled on the doors, they were somehow locked. He pulled on the door handles, banged on the doors, and yelled for someone to open up, but no one answered him or came to his aid. He looked back towards the direction from which he had just come and saw the figure standing at the corner of the library near the alley. He watched with curiosity as the figure smiled, a sick smile, before turning away and walking into the darkness of the alley. Curiosity got the better of him as he slowly descended the library steps and walked towards the alley. This probably wasn't a good idea to follow a complete stranger into a dark alley, but he needed to know what happened to her, and this figure seemed to know something about it. Walking into the alley, he fully expected to see the figure standing there under some sort of light waiting for him. What he did see was complete darkness and no one in the alley. Was he starting to lose his mind? He knew he saw that figure come in here, yet the alley was empty except for him and his breathing. It was at this moment his phone rang, making him jump out of his skin. Answering the phone, however, made him turn pale with fear. She's mine, the voice said with a hiss, making him drop his phone on the concrete, shattering it. Now what was he going to do without a way to call for help? You won't need that where you're going. He spun around quickly to see the figure standing at the entrance of the alley. He took a step forward, determined to confront the stranger, only to bump his foot against something. He looked down and saw it was a thick, hand-carved book. He bent down and picked it up without thinking. He was going to ask the stranger what was the meaning of this, yet when he looked up from the book, the stranger was gone. In the figure's place stood a crowd of people waiting for the bus. Along with the crowds of people, the birds and the vehicles had returned. Everything was back to normal except for the strange book he now had in his possession. Determined to get some answers, he headed back to the library. Maybe the head librarian knew what this book was. Maybe this was the same book that he saw taken from the desk. But before he could make it out of the alley, he was stopped by some kind of barrier. He tried pushing his way through, yet the barrier wouldn't budge. He banged on it and yelled, hoping those on the outside heard him. No one came to his aid. Taking the thick book in both hands, he threw it as hard as he could against the invisible barrier with no results. The book just fell to the ground with a thud, opening to a chapter called Just the Beginning. Curious, he picked it up and began to skim the book. Going through the chapters, he read about the girl speaking to a male librarian about a strange book. How she started experiencing strange things upon bringing the book home. How she vanished without a trace. How a young man was looking for her over the past year. His strange nightmares that pushed him to continue. It was like this book knew everything that had happened up to this point. The only thing it didn't know was what happened next. The book was blank beyond this point of his story. This only raised more questions than answers. Who was the author of this book? There was no page that mentioned any author. Was that Stranger the author? If so, how could he know what was happening? And why did the Stranger stop writing? Was he meant to finish the story? He could write a different ending that helps him get the girl back. He didn't know until he tried. Yet before he could find the pen he carried with him, a bony hand from out of the darkness grabbed onto his ankle and yanked him too hard to the ground. The book fell with a thud as he was pulled deeper into the dark alley. The last thing he saw was the stranger picking up the book, dusting it off, and placing it into a messenger bag before waving at him as he was pulled further into the darkness, never to be seen or heard from again. Even the crowd at the bus stop didn't hear his screams as the figure stepped out of the alley and joined them. None of them thought it strange as he got on the bus headed out of town. The figure was quick to notice the young child next to him staring at him. With his unnerving smile, he pulled the book out of his bag and offered it to the young child. She happily took the book and went sit next to her mother to begin reading her new book. Two for the price of one. The figure said as he got off the bus at the next stop and walked back in the direction of the bookstore. This was starting to get too easy. The figure knew it was only a matter of time before being found out. But for now, the book was going to do its job as long as it could. If you enjoyed our video, let us know what your favorite part was in the comments below. For more Sweet Little Duke, check out this playlist right over here, and don't forget to drop us a like, subscribe to our channel, and ring that notification bell to be notified when we put out a brand new video. We post Monday through Friday at 12pm Central Time, and would love to have you as part of our YouTube troupe. Thanks for watching! Later!